Chapters 25 through 31 of the First Book of Samuel from the Holy Bible in Modern English. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Holy Bible in Modern English, translated by Ferrar Fenton. The First Book of Samuel, chapters 25 through 31. Chapter 25. At this time Samuel died, and the parliament of Israel collected and mourned for him and buried him at his home in Ramah. Thereupon David arose and went down to the desert of Paran. There was a man in Maon whose property lay in Carmel, and the man was very great, for he possessed three thousand sheep and a thousand goats. He was at this time shearing his sheep in Carmel. This man's name was Nabal, and his wife was named Abigail. She was a very clever woman and beautiful in appearance, but her husband was brutish and excessively bad, like one of his dogs. David heard in the desert that Nabal was shearing his sheep, so David sent some of his lads, and David said to the lads, March to Carmel and go to Nabal and wish him well in my name. You must also say this, Good health to you! How are you? And how are your family? And how is all that you have? I have heard that you are shearing. Although your shepherds are near us, I have not hurt them, nor has anything been missing from them all the time they have been in Carmel. Ask your lads, and they will tell you so. So let these youths find favor in your sight, for they come at a good time. Therefore give what comes to your hand to your servants and to your son David. David's lads accordingly went, and reported to Nabal all this speech in the name of David, and sat down. But Nabal answered David's servants, Who is David? And what is the son of Jessai? Nowadays plenty of slaves run away from their masters. And why should I take my bread and my drink and my roast meat that I have roasted for my shearers, and give to fellows who come from I don't know where? David's lads consequently went their way, and returned to, and came and reported to him all these things. Consequently David said to his men, Gird on your swords! And they all girt their swords. David also girt on his sword, and there went up after David about four hundred men, while two hundred guarded the baggage. One of the lads from among Nabal's servants, however, informed Abigail his wife, saying, David has sent messengers from the desert to congratulate our master, and he has abused them. Now these men have been very good to us, and have not hurt us, nor stolen anything all the time we wandered about near them in the open field. They were a guard to us by night and by day all the time we were near them, shepherding the sheep. And now I know and see what troubles me, for there will be plenty of evil for our master and for all his household, because he is such a brute, one cannot speak to him. At this Abigail hastened, and took two hundred loaves, and two skins of wine, and five cooked sheep, and five quarters of corn, and a hundred packets of raisins, and two hundred cakes of figs, and loaded them upon asses, and said to the lad, Go on before me, I will follow after you. But she did not inform her husband Nabal. Now she rode on her ass, and went down to the foot of the hills, and saw David and his men advancing on her. So she approached them, and David said, I never broke the bargain. I protected all that belonged to this fellow in the desert, and nothing was missing belonging to him, but he has returned me bad for good. May God do this to the enemies of David, and add to this, if I leave anything belonging to him at morning light, even an urchin behind the wall. Then Abigail was afraid of David, therefore she hastened and dismounted from her ass, and fell down on her face because of the anger of David, and bowed to him to the earth. Then she knelt at his feet and said, Let the fault be to me, my lord, and let your handmaid speak in your hearing, and listen to the words of your handmaid. Let not my lord lay to his heart about that black guard Nabal, for he is like his name, a fool, and folly is with him. But I, your handmaid, saw not the lads of my lord whom you sent. So now, my lord, by the life of the ever-living, by the life of your soul, oh, that the ever-living would restrain you from going to bloodshed and save you from your own hand. But may your enemies be like Nabal, and whoever seeks to injure my lord." And this present here, which your servant has brought to my lord, give it to the lads who march after the footsteps of my lord. Overlook, therefore, the fault of your handmaid, for the ever-living will make for my lord a safe home. For you fight the battles of the ever-living, my prince, and harm will not meet you all your time. 
when a man rises to pursue you to seek your life, then the life of my Lord will be treasured in the treasury of your ever-living God, while the life of your enemies will be slung from the hand of the slinger. It will be so, for the ever-living will effect for my prince all the good he has promised to you, and will appoint you to be a leader to Israel. So let not this be an agitation and disturbance to the heart of my prince to cause him to shed needless blood. Let my prince save himself from himself, and the ever-living will reward my prince when you will remember your handmaid. Then David replied to Abigail, Thank the Lord of Israel who has sent you today to meet me, and bless your skill, and bless you who have prevented me today from bloodshed and saving my hand from myself. For certainly by the life of the ever-living, the God of Israel, who restrained me from injuring you, if you had not been quick and come to meet me, there would not have been left to Nabal an urchin behind his wall this morning. David then accepted what she had brought to him, and said to her, Go in peace to your home. You see, I have listened to your voice, and gladdened your face. Abigail therefore went to Nabal, but he was drinking in his house as at a royal feast, and the heart of Nabal was pleased with himself, and he was very drunk. So she told him nothing, great or small, until morning light. But in the morning, when the wine had gone out of Nabal, his wife informed him of these events, when his heart died in his breast, and he became like a stone. And ten days after, the ever-living struck Nabal, and he died. When David heard that Nabal was dead, he exclaimed, Thank the ever-living who has avenged my insult on the head of Nabal, and restrained his servant from wrong, for the ever-living has returned the insults of Nabal upon his own head. David also sent and spoke to Abigail to take her as a wife. So David's officers went to Abigail at Carmel and said to her, David has sent us to you to take you to himself as a wife. Then she arose and bowed her face earthward and said, I am your servant to attend, to wash the feet of the servants of my lord. Then Abigail prepared in haste and mounted her ass, and five of her maids went with her on foot and marched after the messengers of David. Thus she became his wife. David also took Achinoam of Jezreel, and they were both his wives. Saul, however, gave Michal, his daughter, the wife of David, to Faltai ben Laish, who was from Galim. Chapter 26 The Ziphites then went to Saul at Gibeah, and said, Do you know that David is in hiding in the hills of Kikala opposite Jeshimon? Saul consequently arose and went down to the desert of Ziph with three thousand men, the choicest of Israel, to hunt after David in the desert of Ziph, and Saul encamped in the hills of Kikala opposite Jeshimon by the roadside. But David occupied the desert, and saw when Saul came after him towards the desert. David also sent spies, and learnt that Saul came resolutely. David therefore arose, and came to the place where Saul was encamped. And David saw the place where Saul and Abner ben Ner, the commander of Saul's army, slept. But Saul slept within a barricade of wagons, with his forces around them. So David addressed Achimelech the Hittite, and Abishai ben Zeruiah, brother of Joab, and said, who will go down with me to Saul in the camp? And Abishai replied, I will go down with you. Therefore David and Abishai went to the army at night, and saw Saul laid asleep within the barricade of wagons, with his spear stuck in the ground at his head, and Abner and the forces sleeping around them. Then Abishai said, God has today delivered your enemy into your hand, so now I will pin him at a stroke with a spear to the earth and not waken him. But David answered his officer, you shall not destroy him, for who can raise his hand against the consecrated to the ever-living and be blameless? Then David added, By the life of the ever-living, if the Lord struck him, or his day came and he died, or he went down to battle and was killed, but it would bring trouble on me from the ever-living if I raised my hand against the Lord's consecrated. However, take the spear that is by his head and the jug of water, and let us be gone." So David took the spear and the jug of water from beside the head of Saul, and went away with them. And none saw, and none knew, and none awoke, for they all slept. A deep sleep had fallen on them from the ever-living. David then passed over the ford, and stood at the top of a hill at a distance with a great space between them, from where David called to the forces and to Abner ben Ner, asking, Are you there, Abner? When Abner rejoined and said, who are you, calling to the commander? So David replied to Abner, 
Are you not a man? And who is like you in Israel? So why have you not guarded your master, the commander? For a person has been to destroy the commander, your lord. By the life of the ever-living, it is not a good thing that you have done, for you are liable to death for not guarding your master, who is consecrated to the ever-living. So now look for your commander's spear and water jug, which were by his head. But Saul recognized the voice of David and asked, Is that your voice, son David? And David replied, It is my voice, my lord commander. And then he continued, Why does my lord hunt so after his servant? For what have I done? And what wrong is there in my hand? Let my lord the king listen therefore to what your servant says. If the ever-living has excited you, let me be a sweet-perfumed offering. But if any of mankind, curse them before the ever-living for driving me out from the inheritance of the ever-living to herd with vagabonds, saying, Go, go serve other gods. But now let not my blood fall to the earth away from the presence of the ever-living. For what has the commander of Israel come out to hunt? A single flea, as they hunt a partridge on the mountains? Then Saul answered, I have done wrong. Come back, my son David, for I will never injure you, since my life has been respected in your sight today. I have acted like a fool, and ten thousand times mad. David replied and said, Here is the commander's spear. Let one of the lads come over and take it, for the ever-living rewards a man for his honesty and fidelity. Now as the ever-living gave you today to my power, and I refrained from lifting my hand against the consecrated to the ever-living, therefore as your life was respected today in my eyes, let thus my life be respected in the eyes of the ever-living, for he will deliver me from every trouble. Then Saul said to David, Son David, you are noble. What you wish you will accomplish by the self-command you have exercised. David then went his way, and Saul returned to his residence. Chapter 27 David, however, said in his heart, I shall fall some day into the hand of Saul. Would it not be well for me to take refuge in the country of the Philistim, when Saul will give up hunting after me again in any of the districts of Israel, and I shall protect myself from his hand? David consequently passed over, he and the six hundred men with him, to Achish ben Mauk, king of Gath, where David and his men settled in Gath with Achish, each with his family, and David with his two wives, Achinoman the Jezreelitist, and Abigail the widow of Nabal the Carmelitess. And it was reported to Saul that David had fled to Gath, so Saul did not again hunt for him. David afterwards said to Achish, If now I have found favor in your sight, give me a residence in one of your country villages, and I will stay there. For why should your servant live in the royal city with you? Akish consequently assigned to him at once Ziklag, therefore Ziklag belongs to the kings of Judah to this day, and the length of time that David stayed in the country of the Philistim was a year and four months. But David and his men went and plundered the Gisharites and the Gerzites and the Amalekites, who were in the country which lies towards the wall of the land of Mitzer. So David conquered the country, leaving neither men nor women alive, but taking the sheep and cattle and asses and camels and clothing, then returned and came to Achish. And Achish asked, Where have you been plundering this time? David answered, Towards the south of Judah, and towards the south of the Irachmalites, and to the south of the Kenites. For David did not let a man or a woman go with him to Gath, remarking, For fear they should tell of us, and say, David has done this. He, however, plundered in this way all the time he stayed in the country of the Philistim, and Achish believed David, reflecting, He will make himself stink with his nation, the Israelites, and then he will be my subject forever. Chapter 28 It was at this time the Philistim assembled their forces for war with Israel, and Achish said, I know that you will go with me to the campaign with your men. And David answered, You know well enough what your servant will do. And Achish replied to David, Certainly, therefore I will appoint you as captain of my guard all the time. When Samuel died, and all Israel had mourned for him, they buried him near Ramah in his own village, and Saul drove away the spirit-raisers and the soothsayers from the country. But the Philistim collected and advanced, and encamped at Shunam. Saul also assembled the forces of Israel, and encamped at Gilboa. 
when saul saw the camp of the philistim he feared and his heart trembled extremely saul consequently inquired of the ever-living but the ever-living did not answer him neither by dreams nor by visions nor by prophets consequently saul said to his officers seek me a woman who possesses a divining spirit and i will go and inquire of her and his officers replied to him there is a woman at endor who possesses a spirit then saul stripped and clothed himself in different colors and went he and two officers with him and came to the woman at night and said to her will you call to a spirit for me now and bring to me whoever i tell you but the woman replied to him what when you know what saul has done who has driven the spirit raisers and the scientists from the country so why do you seek for my life to get me killed then saul swore to her by the ever-living saying by the ever-living life nothing hurtful shall happen to you for the affair so the woman asked him whom shall i bring up to you and he replied bring up samuel to me and when the woman saw samuel she shrieked with a loud voice and said to saul ah, why have you deceived me you are saul but the king answered her fear not for me who what have you seen and the woman said to saul i saw divine messengers ascending out of the earth he then asked her what is he like she replied an old man is now coming up and he is covered with a cloak and saul recognized that it was samuel and fell face forward to the ground and was terrified then samuel said to saul for what have you disturbed me to bring me up and saul replied i am in great distress for the philistim are at war with me and god has turned from me and answers me no more neither by means of instructors nor by dreams so i called to you to tell me what to do samuel then asked and for what do you inquire of me when god has turned away and is far from you the ever-living will do to you as he said through me for the ever-living has taken the commandership from your hand and will give it to your neighbor to david because you did not listen to the voice of the ever-living and did not execute his deep wrath upon the amalekites therefore the ever-living has brought this trouble to you to-day the ever-living also will give israel with you into the hands of the philistim and to-morrow you shall be with me the ever-living will also give the camp of israel into the hand of the philistim saul then immediately fell down to the earth for he could not stand and was greatly terrified at the words of samuel beside there was no strength in him for he had not eaten food all that day and all that night but the woman came to saul in great terror and agitation and said to him you see your servant has listened to your voice and i have placed my life in my hand and have listened to the request you made me therefore listen now yourself to the voice of your servant and i will put before you a mouth full of food so eat it and it will strengthen you that you can go on your way but he refused and said i will not eat his attendants however urged him and the woman also he therefore listened to their voices and arose from the ground and rested upon a couch and the woman having a fat calf in the stable hastened and killed it and took flour and kneaded and baked biscuits and approached saul and his attendants and they ate and arose and went away in the night chapter twenty nine the philistim had now assembled all their forces at afak and israel had encamped at the well which is in jezrael and the forces of the philistim advanced by battalions and regiments but david and his men were with achish in the rear the generals of the philistim however asked who are these hebrews and achish answered the generals of the philistim is not this david the officer of saul king of israel who has been with me for this year or two and i have not found in him any fault from the day he deserted until now the generals of the philistim however collected about him and the generals of the philistim said to him send the man away and let him go to his residence where let him be retained for he shall not advance with us to the campaign lest he betray us in the campaign for how could he reconcile himself to his prince would it not be by the heads of our men 
Is not this David about whom they chorused with dances, saying, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands? Akish consequently summoned David and said to him, By the ever-living life, in my opinion, you have been right and good in your intercourse with me in the camp, nor have I found anything wrong about you from the day you came up to me until this time. But the opinion of the nobles is not good about you. Therefore, return and go away quietly and create no offense in the sight of the Philistine lords. David, however, asked Akish, Why? What have I done? What have you found in your servant from the day I came to you until this day, that I may not go and fight the enemies of my lord the king? But Akish answered and said to David, I acknowledge you are as good in my opinion as a messenger of God. The generals of the Philistim, however, say, He shall not advance with us to the campaign. So now rest till the morning with the servants of your prince who came with you, but arise at dawn of light with them, and depart. Consequently, David and his men rested until they marched at dawn to return to the country of the Philistim. Then the Philistim advanced to Jezreel. Chapter 30 But when David and his men arrived at Ziklag on the third day, they found that the Amalekites had devastated the south up to Ziklag, and attacked Ziklag, and burnt it with fire, and captured the women who were in it, from the least to the greatest. They did not kill a single person, but carried them off and departed. So when David and his men came to the town, they saw it burnt by fire, and their wives, children, and daughters carried off. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until there was no more strength in them to weep. The two wives of David also were captured, Akinoam the Jezreelitess, and Abigail the widow of Nabal the Carmelite, and it troubled David greatly, for the people threatened to stone him. For the soul of all the forces was bitter because of their sons and daughters, but David relied upon his ever-living God. David consequently said to Abiathar the priest, son of Achimelech, Bring me the ephod. And Abiathar brought the ephod to David, and David inquired of the ever-living, asking, Shall I pursue this troop, and can I overtake them? When he replied to him, follow for you shall overtake and deliver therefore david and the six hundred men with him marched and came to the canal at the wall where part halted but david and four hundred men continued the pursuit whilst two hundred men who were exhausted halted at the passage of the canal of the wall and they found a man an egyptian in the field and took him to david they gave him food and he ate and they quenched him with water they also gave him a slice of fig cake and two bunches of raisins and he ate and his energy returned to him for he had not eaten food nor drank water for three days and three nights david then asked him who are you or from where and he answered i am a young egyptian the slave of an amalekite and my master abandoned me three days ago because i broke down we had devastated the pastures of the Kithites as high up as Judah, and the pastures of Caleb, and we burnt Ziklag with fire. David next asked him, Will you guide me to this gang? And he replied, Swear to me by God that you will not kill me, and not give me up to the hand of my master, and I will lead you to that gang. So he led them, and they were scattered all over the ground eating and drinking and feasting upon the great booty they had taken from the country of the Philistim and from the land of Judah. David therefore assailed them with spirit from the evening to the next day, and none of them escaped except four hundred young men who mounted on camels and fled. Then David rescued all the Amalekites had taken, and David also rescued his two wives, and they lost no one, small or great, of their sons or daughters and the plunder and all that they had taken with them david got back but david took all the sheep and cattle they drove out from that camp to himself and said this is david's booty but when david approached the two hundred men who had been exhausted by the march after david and who stayed by the canal of the wall they came out to meet david and the force with him and david came to them and wished them health but all the vile and blackguardly fellows among those who marched with david objected and said because they did not go with us, none of the booty that we have captured shall be given to them, except to each one his wife and children. Let them take them and be off. David, however, said, 
You shall not do so, brothers, since the ever-living has given it to us, and has guarded us, and delivered the gang who fell upon us into our power. And who will listen to this talk of yours? As for the share of the man who goes into battle, and the share of him who stays with the baggage, both shall be equal. So from that day forwards it was fixed as an institution and decree for Israel until this time. When David arrived at Ziklag, he sent part of the booty to the princes of Judah, his neighbors, saying, Here is a present to you from the plunder of the enemies of the ever-living. To those also in Bethel, and those in Ramah Negeb, and those in Jathir, and those in Ashima, and those in Rakal, and those in the villages of the Arachmalai, and to those in the villages of the Kenites, and those in Karma, and those in Korashan, and to those in Athak, and to those in Kebron, and to all the places where men had been with his men. Chapter 31 but the Philistim fought with Israel, and the men of Israel fled before the Philistim, and fell routed on the mountains of Gilboa. Thus the Philistim defeated Saul and his sons, and the Philistim killed Jonathan, and Abinadab, and Melchishua, the sons of Saul. Then the battle rested upon Saul, but the archers advanced upon him with their bows, and he was grievously wounded by the archers. Saul consequently said to his squire, <coughs> draw your sword and stab me with it <coughs> for fear these foul fellows should come and stab me and outrage over me but his squire refused for he was in great terror so saul took the sword and fell upon it and when his squire saw that saul was dead then he also fell upon his sword and died with him thus saul died with his three sons and his squire and all his guards in one day but when the Israelites who were beyond the valley and beyond the Jordan saw that the army of Israel was routed, and that Saul and his sons were dead, they abandoned the villages and fled, and the Philistim came and occupied them. When it was morning, the Philistim came to strip the slain, and found Saul and his three sons fallen on the mountains of Gilboa. So they cut off his head, and stripped off his armor, and sent around the country of the Philistim to proclaim the good news in the temples of their idols and to the people. Then they placed his arms in the temples of Ashtaroth, and hung up his body upon the walls of Bethshan. But the inhabitants of Jabesh-Gilad heard about it, and what the Philistim had done to Saul. Consequently all the brave men arose, and marched all night, and took the body of Saul, and the bodies of his sons from the walls of Bethshan, and brought them to Jabesh, and burnt them there. They afterward took the bones, and buried them under the tamarind tree in Jabesh, and mourned seven days. The End of Chapters 25 through 31 And the end of the first book of Samuel from the Holy Bible in Modern English, translated by Ferrar Fenton. Recording by Mark Penfold.